sentiment's so weak here. What's the argument for selling it from here? I mean, I think sentiment is very weak. I mean, I think the big story is the fear of a global slowdown next year. I mean, I actually do not believe a supply picture looks that bad. I mean, you had the OPEC president over the weekend saying, we'll cut more if necessary. There are reports of some U.S. drillers saying, we're going to basically not be rushing to put so many rigs on the market next year. And so I do believe that the supply picture is not nearly as bad as what we're seeing in terms of price action. That said, though, all this chaos out of Washington, again, fears about a slowdown, that can take oil much lower. If demand really becomes a serious question, how quickly can supply respond? I mean, More than it already has. I already. mean, there's a question about how quickly can supply respond to a physical oversupply or really to sentiment. I think sentiment can be harder to change in the near term. And so I actually believe OPEC can be pretty responsive. I think we need to see more out of U.S. drillers to change sentiment. But again, as long as we have the story out of Washington, I think it's going to be shaky for oil. Talked about, uh, talked to uh, Saad Al Hosseini uh, a little while ago, who said it's a, it's a supply. It's a supply issue. You've got, you know, supply overseas. Now, obviously, OPEC said they're, they're going to do right. their cuts. But the U.S., there's no really end in sight to the supply coming on the market from here. I mean, here's the question going into 2019. I mean, there are some reports of some U.S. drillers coming out and saying, we're going to operate within cash flow. We are going to exercise some restraint. I think the supply story, though, right now, OPEC cuts have not taken effect. I think we have that discussion in January when those cuts take effect and the Saudi policy of cutting exports to the United States. I think that could be significant in changing sentiment when you have a change in weekly U.S. data. What about geopolitics, right? Mattis leaving, other issues in the Middle East, we're leaving Syria. I mean, you could count your all the fingers on your hand, you come up with a lot of issues. I mean, it's interesting that Mattis' departure, I think, could play out either way for 2019. I mean, Mattis was a restraining factor in terms of, for example, on Syria. He apparently told President Trump not to do such a significant bombing campaign there. But he also advocated staying in the nuclear deal. Without Mattis, is Trump more unleashed to sort of pursue his policies that could be more combustible in the Middle East? Or is he going to basically say, time to focus on the United States? I don't want to get involved in these Middle East entanglements. I think it's too soon to say how it's going to play out, but you could have it go either way, actually. Um, pipelines early next year, they're coming on, right? Yeah, I mean, that has been end of 2019, and I think that has been weighing on sentiment as well. There was the story of the summer of the big upgrade in U.S. production, and now there's a sense of the bottleneck that never really happened in terms of the Permian. So I think people are concerned about what happens end of 2019, especially you have a softer demand picture. Bottom close? No? I mean, WTI, 44.23? I mean, what we're watching right now is a 42.05, the level from August 2017. Again, we can go lower, we think, going into the end of year. But again, I think as these cuts start to take effect in terms of the OPEC policy, that should clean up the oversupply.